Hi guys and welcome back to another episode of my athletic compendium. It's James. It's Bart. <laughs> <laughs> oh Jesus, we're on one today. We haven't done one yet. No, we haven't for done one for a while. Um, so it's been a couple of weeks. We've both had a bit of a holiday, a bit of a recess. It's been quite nice, hasn't it? Yeah. Had a nice time in Amsterdam. Amsterdam was good, yeah. It was pride. Oh. And it was chaos. Mm-hmm. And we wondered why the, the tickets were so expensive when we bought them and we didn't realise it was Pride Weekend, which my first ever gay marriage was in, um, uh, was in, uh, what was it? Netherlands. Netherlands. <laughs> Thanks. Um, so Pride's massive over there, so it's just one big party all weekend, it's class. Nice. Mm, how's yours? Very good. Very hot. Mm. Had that week off where we had uh, the big sun. The big sun. The big sun. The big heat wave. It was lovely. Oh, that one. <laughs> Well, and that's always there. Yeah, yeah so no, it was really, it was really good, but both had a little break. Yeah. Quite nice, quite ready to get back to it. Um, so today we're going to talk about the importance of goal setting. Mm-hmm. Why is it important? Uh, so you can actually, they're actually achievable. Mm. If you don't set goals, you don't know what you're aiming for. What you're aiming for, what you're doing. Absolutely, but it's also important to set achievable goals um, because. I was having a little think today and, you know, I've set myself several gym goals or sports-based goals over the over the past years. And looking back on them, they really just weren't realistic. Not when you're trying to balance lots of different things. Um, so I'll, I'll just give you my one for, for last year. If you can hear that, that's my automatic cat feeder and that was the cat leaving. <laughs> Let me close the door. You can edit that what? out. <laughs> what were your goals, James? So, my goals last year were to weigh 92 kilos. Yeah. yeah. So, so this is what I set myself in New Year. You know, New Year, New Me. By the end of the year, this is what I'll be. 92 kilos. Bearing in mind, I was 86 at the time, so I wanted to gain a stone. Um, I wanted to be lean as well. So I wanted to have gained a stone and be lean... I wanted bench press to go up to 125. I wanted deadlift to be 200. I haven't quite hit that at that point. And I wanted my squat to be 165. Bearing in mind, like I said, I was 86 kilos at the time. I was playing rugby three times a week. I'm working a full-time job. We're doing the podcast. Not really realistic, was it? No. And you gave yourself a two-week target, didn't you? <laughs> no, I gave myself a year to work on that. So I thought, you know, that's a realistic weight gain over the year. But then actually, is it realistic to gain that amount of weight, then be shredded as well? Because obviously you're going to lose fat mass. So I probably had to gain a bit more. So I didn't really set myself some weight goals that were, that were good. But equally, the strength-based ones, I was trying to get massively stronger in all three areas whilst playing sport and battling injuries you know even little niggles that just get in the way so hmm. you got any similar circumstances I, I think and we discussed this very briefly before we started the podcast but I think the the whole smart goal setting so when you're in GCSEP it's specific measurable achievable realistic time bound mm-hmm. that time bound one or even like the targets that you give you, I think yourself, I think, yeah, there there there, ha- there is an element of real like having it realistic. Mm-hmm. But in terms of the time frame that you give it, especially if you're a sports player, is I don't necessarily agree with it because. Tell me why. <laughs> um, I don't necessarily agree with it because. It puts a, t- like, obviously that time pressure, which I totally understand can be um, very useful for certain people because it mm-hmm. kind of gives you that, okay, I need to achieve it by this point in time, this this month, uh, therefore I need to make the actions now. Yeah, I get that. I do understand that. But I think if you're a sports player, um, which this is a, a, my athletic companion, yeah. so a lot of, our, if there are any listeners, it should be, it should be you know, sports players or athletes or whatever, um, I think it's good to have your goals and it's good to, and generally you are likely to be the person that, that's going to implement things to you know achieve those goals. But 
so many different variables, co- variables and contributors can, <clears throat> can come into play that will bring it forward or push it back or mm-hmm. whatever. So, you know, there's injury, there's general fatigue, especially like both of us, where yep. we work as well as play our sport. Mm-hmm. Um, so it's, you know, when, you know, when we have time to recover, you know, if we're mid-season, we're training twice a week playing uh and playing as well so three three sessions a week which is going to put us under fatigue mm-hmm. when do we fit our sessions in when do we work exactly there's a lot to juggle so i think giving yourself that time pressure is quite a dangerous thing because it could either knock you back you know if you set, give yourself a target for three months time or x amount of m- months time you're you know almost setting yourself up for a bit of disappointment if yeah. if, if it's not a realistic mm-hmm time sort of time frame and and yeah i suppose that's why those smart goals are well they're designed so you, you're thinking about all the variables mm. which is good um which is good but I, but I do agree with you you know when you're setting these goals things do sound absolutely achievable like i said i, I felt like i could gain a stone in a year that was fine but i think for a sedentary person yeah who who doesn't play sport and doesn't have that exactly. fatigue from training and playing it's those those intense. body weight body size body composition strength goals are so much more attainable for those people that aren't doing additional stuff like playing a sport if you are solely going to the gym as your exercise then gaining size and weight and muscle um, and getting stronger are definitely achievable mm. but when you're when you're trying to do that as well as play sport almost like a professional you're training three you know twice a week and you're playing on the weekend you need to recover and, and actually those goals aren't attainable so mm. give yourself a bit of a break um obviously not in your training and things like that but in striving for certain goals i think in hindsight, looking over the, the many years that I've been training and playing now, during the season, I know we've we've spoken previously about, you know, working on your strength during the season because it's less stress than hypertrophy and it's more manageable to to balance with your with your training. But I, I personally would never set now any strength goals or any you know, weight-based goals whilst I'm in the season. Um, just because, like you said, there's so many variables that just get chucked in your way that it's just another it's another thing to set yourself up to fail. I'd rather be playing the sport in the best mental health mm. that I can do and knowing I've trained well but not necessarily striving for something specific. I think just based off what you're saying, obviously, yeah, you straight train strength and power mid-season because it's less taxing on the body whatever but exactly like you mentioned there it's not something you just because you're training that specific attribute doesn't necessarily mean that mid-season you're going to be getting stronger Mm -hmm. or becoming more powerful although you're training for it you're still mid-season you're going to be fatigued you're going to be this that and the other so any kind of gains you'll be making uh or you know uh, that that kind of attribute that you're training isn't necessarily going to be improving but it's almost like keeping yourself topped up yeah um maintaining then, essentially. Ma- maintaining it yeah exactly um but i think a good like tip from me from my experience and my coaching experience as well is giving yourself non uh what's the word uh like not necessarily a weight gain or mm-hmm. a, um a strength gain like a number but more of a a thing of okay i'm going to give my target myself a target of a a short-term achievable goal that's more based off something that I can just do so things like making sure that I'm eating more fruit is one that I Mm -hmm. need to implement a little bit more yeah and because I do find myself you know get picking up little crappy illnesses Mm -hmm. uh, like uh, which can knock me back and stop me from performing so making sure that my immune system is Fully functioning. fully functioning so i'm having my micronutrients and i'm i'm, I'm doing the things that's going to help my immune system 
which is something that I can do right now. Mm-hmm. I can I can have a uh, have a bit of fruit, and then I just give myself a target of saying, okay, well, mm-hmm. every single drinking day, drinking enough water, making yourself, making sure you're getting enough sleep each day. Those are the, the achievable goals. targets yeah. that you can strive for. And then ultimately, you're going to get those performance goals and those mm-hmm. uh, weight loss or weight gain or you know whatever goals based off those little targets Absolutely. and things that you're doing. It's kind of like almost like your your um, performance go- goals and your you know size goals or whatever are kind of like a byproduct mm-hmm. of of your uh, your kind of targets that you know of training an extra session a week mm-hmm. or making sure that you're doing two extra recoveries a week yeah. recovery sessions to make sure that you're feeling better and and you can set yourself goals in an off season because your the intensity that you're doing is far less you're probably not training as well you've got a lot more natural recovery because you're not doing those additional sessions and you can focus on something specific like if you do want to get stronger you can work on a strength block then if you do want to gain size that's a great time to do so because your exercise intensity is lower the stress on your legs because you're not running or contact sports obviously we're talking about rugby again but contact sports and things like that, you're not getting those injuries, even if they're minor, the tightness in your muscles, everything's working in your favour then. You can devote 100% to getting stronger or getting bigger. Your performance during the season should be your your goal, is making sure you're performing at your best. And, mm. you know, realistically, you're not going to be performing at your best if you are trying to work on getting stronger because you're then you're... You're not working on your little skills that you need for the game. Mm. Those are the most important factors. So, yeah. You, got, you can, it's almost like you've, um, it's, it's, especially as a sports performer, you're spinning a lot of plates all at once. Mm-hmm. Um, and by giving yourself, giving yourself like these extra targets, not only on your general rugby slash sports performance, um, and your <laughs> little goals and targets that you're hitting throughout the week to make sure that you're eating right and doing this, that and the other. But giving yourself that extra stress of, um, okay, I want to drop this amount of weight in X amount of time or I want to gain weight, especially mid-season. Mm-hmm. Gain, gaining weight is not easy for no. me anyway. But Not when, um, you're, when you're training yeah. twice and you're playing on the weekend. It's just... A, adding an extra plate to spin which is another yeah. stress i think just to you know have um priorities in terms of what you want to be focusing on at that point in time again like you've mentioned in the off season or in pre-season um arguably you, you know you've got more opportunity to get strength performance gains or uh to ma- have more of a weight management mm-hmm. um that's that's kind of your opportunity mid season. You can devote that. more time to it, not yeah. necessarily even more effort, but yeah. you've got more time to do those things. It doesn't. It, and, and when I say this, it's not like if you're mid season and you've got a weight gain, mm. like a muscle mass gain, uh, sort of target or you know thing that you want to do. It doesn't mean you shouldn't like strive for it. Shouldn't yeah. strive for it. You can still do things to implement it. You can still say, okay, well, Absolutely. I'm going to add an e- extra snack in every day. Mm-hmm. It's, you, I'm not saying you can't do that, but I'm saying don't... Don't beat yourself up if you don't achieve yeah, that. Yeah, don't, don't put a time limit on it. Don't, mm-hmm. you know, for, like have that as a main focus. Just again, just say, okay, so if I'm adding an extra snack and it's going to push me towards that kind of thing that I want to achieve... But it's also going to help me give give me an opportunity to get my extra fruit in, or yeah. to to help my recovery if it's an, a higher protein mm-hmm. snack. Do you know what I mean? So, Absolutely, it's all those one percent, isn't it? Don't don't focus yeah. on your target at the end. Focus on what little thing can you do now mm. that will that will help you towards it. And and like you said, it's about not giving yourself that that time, like I did, to be a certain weight by the end of the year when you're trying to play a sport and play competitively you can you can do those things when you've got a little bit more time because um, you do you, you end up beating yourself up you're mm. like well I set myself that goal and I well I, I got nowhere near it mm. so you must have failed when mm. actually you've had a really good year of sports performance so why isn't that the goal mm. I think another thing to consider which 
arguably goes a little bit against what I've just said. Go on. But um, have you heard of Parkinson's Law? Heard of it. Heard Couldn't of tell it. you what it was. Go on. So it, it's, this isn't a direct quote. This is just kind of what I can remember of it. But um, a t- any given task will fill the amount of time that you give it. So, is that Parkinson's <clears throat> Law? What did I say? You said Parkinson's. What is it Parkinson's? It was Parkinson's, I'm sure. I thought I heard someone said it or something. No. Anyway, Parkinson's go on. Law. Yeah, I'm sure it is. Um, yeah, that that's the, the law. And, and so your target, your New Year's resolution of, of achieving this, these achievable mm-hmm. but goals over over the span of a year. You it know, will take you a year to do rather than do it in a Your month. first three, four, five, maybe even six months might be like, oh, I've still got X amount of time to mm-hmm. do it. I'll do it later, I'll do it later, I'll do it later. And you end up pushing it back further yeah. until it does get to that last, the last few months and then all of a sudden you've got to add an extra 30 kilograms to your deadlift and you're like, okay, that's I'm not like, realistic. I've got, I've got a month, do you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So, and that's what kind of back to what I said before, having really small, short term achievable goals is probably better. Mm-hmm. Than having one big goal than, at the end. Yeah. Got to break yeah. them down. As much as I agree with New Year's resolutions, um, well, I do and I do, but as much as I think that they're a good idea because they do help people, you know, have a focus. Have a focus. Um, but to have to, to give yourself that thing of over a year, it just, it doesn't, mm-hmm. I don't think it works. No. Personally. But, um, I know, yeah, I, I agree. It, it, we're not saying don't have a goal in mind. Mm. We're just saying, don't beat yourself up on it mm. when you don't reach it because actually trying to strive to achieve it and making that your sole goal will probably not benefit your sports performance. And that is ultimately the most important thing if you're an athlete is performing your best. Mm. Um, and you can focus on those other tasks when you've got less time, oh, sorry, when you've got more time in the off season. Just don't beat yourself up about it. Mm. Should we wrap Definitely. it up there? Yeah, we can wrap it up there. I think that was, um, we like, nice some short. good little tips in there. Some nice little nugs. Nugs. Nug nugs. Um, yeah, I'm just trying to think of closing thoughts. To be fair. But I think when it comes to goal setting, um, to just be, spend time thinking about it and think about the implications that it might have. Mm. If you want to put time, a time frame on it, on it that is fine. Um, but, Make sure it's not too big. Make sure that you know it is it is achievable. Think about what time of your season or off season or pre season mm-hmm. you're in. You know, is it going to be suited to that period of t- in time? Um, so really think about how it how the, it can have an Im- like an effect on everything else mm-hmm. um, around it, and whether it's the right time to do it because you can put goals off to, to a more appropriate time and then mm-hmm. focus on other areas if it's. If that's if it's more suitable, it's more suitable. Yeah, I agree. We'll wrap it up there, mm. nice and short. Hope you enjoyed. We'll be back next week.